just have way too much stuff. grab a black mesh bag and I recently ordered some perfume that came in this packaging it comes with this black filler paper which is perfect for a sensory box so I'm gonna just put that in here to also store it money when you don't have to. So this would be perfect for like Halloween. Oh, it's everywhere. But. Okay. So, 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 and there we go. So I have these two. So this is a little trick I wanted to share with you. I got this idea from a supervisor I had during externship and I still use it. So shout out to Pam if you're ever watching this. So what you do is you just grab a clock. This one I got super cheap at Target. And you grab two pictures that go together. She used Curious George and Bananas. So that's kind of what I just stuck with. I mean, you could do any pictures you prefer. You kind of want to choose ones that go together though. And for example, let's say your session ends at six o'clock. You're going to put the banana on the 12 and then Curious George always follows the minute hand. So, you know, especially cause kids don't really know how to read time now. <laughs> Um, this gives you that visual representation like, oh, Curious George is almost at the banana. The speech session is almost done. We just have a couple more minutes. Whereas if, you know, the banana is all the way at the 6, like it ends at 6.30, the child knows like, okay, he has to go to 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 6 for the session to be over. So this is just something that I like to do if a child requests that I set up the clock, then I will honor that. I obviously don't use this for my older kids, typically like preschool age, but it's a really cute idea. And I would have never thought to do this if it weren't for my supervisor. Yeah, this is something cute that you can do. So this is how I made a visual speech schedule while I was doing in-house clinic. I found a pack of these canvas boards from Walmart. They were super cheap, like a dollar or two for a three pack. And then I also bought a pack of these different colored felts that fit perfectly on the canvas boards. So then what I did was on the corner of each board, I just attached a piece of Velcro and make sure it's the hard, like rougher Velcro pieces because that's what's gonna help the felt to stick. And then I just attached my felt right on top. Then what I did was I printed out a bunch of pictures. So it does take some time to prep, but I mean, this I'll have forever. So these are all the activities that I've done during in-house clinic that I've just collected over the years. And I just pulled out a few here to show you. A shape puzzle. This I played so much. Don't Break the Ice, Play-Doh, Mr. Potato Head, Shopping Cart. So what I did was on the back I've attached some more Velcro. Once again, make sure it's the rough one. That way it will stick onto the felt. If you do the smooth one, then it's not gonna stick on there. I would just put them all like this. That way the students can see exactly what we're doing in therapy that day. And after each activity, I would have the student pull off the picture and then put it in a bag. That way they can visualize, okay, we only have four more activities left. Or this could also motivate them. Like if I have a student who really wants to play with Play-Doh and I put that at the end, that's really going to motivate them to get through the next three activities before we play with the Play-Doh. 
so I love using this this would be great for um, discrimination I'm like okay fine the play-doh I have a lot of students who use AAC so even having them point or take off could do that if they are very low functioning or if you're starting off with step one I might just put one picture and have them identify where the play-doh is and then move it around and see if they can find it so many ways to implement this but yeah I need to buy clear containers because I eventually want to separate everything into themes I'm not there yet but uh, what I want to do now is put all of my like prep materials in here so my velcro and like this stuff so I have these sticky dot things rings these extra batteries for toys my hole puncher scissors Oh gosh. These are reusable sticker pads from Melissa and Doug. I haven't opened this one yet because I want to do a whole community theme but this one I use all the time it comes with these reusable stickers with different backgrounds so I love using these for identifying animals prepositions these are awesome for that um, you can do pronouns even with this describing you can do so much I had a student who was obsessed with sea animals, so he always wanted to do this one. They're very cute. So yeah, if you don't have one already, I recommend... I just have so much stuff! I'm overwhelmed. In this bag, I'm just going to put everything in these clear folders. Like this is for... Valentine's Day, I have Pop-Up Fun, Classroom, I have St. Patrick's, Winter, Hot Chocolate, this is like Halloween monster theme, more Halloween stuff, so I think I'm just going to put all of these here. I have these which I use for like emotional regulation and talking about emotions. A lot of my students who have ASD struggle with expressing how they feel or regulating their emotions in general. So I like using visuals to show when they're in the red zone versus the green zone. And then they also come with strategies that you can implement. So I'm going to put this in one of these clear envelopes. For now. As well as these two charts that I have that you've seen before. This is a how do you feel with all the different emotions. And then this is Listening Larry, which I use all the time in my sessions to talk about how we listen in speech. I guess this will be like my emotion folder for the future. Okay, so in this one I have WH questions and I like that this resource, which is from Speechy Musings, uses actual pictures because it's more concrete and less abstract especially for my lower functioning kiddos. And it all comes with these posters, so you can answer what questions in different ways. And then it shows you visually. So I only have what questions, but I think, hmm, I think it comes with more. 
I think I might come with all the WH questions, but I just prepped the what ones because these are the ones I needed at the time. I placed all of these folders into a bag that way they're all just consolidated here and then I also put my extra folders in here so I think this is set for now. Daiso bag I have some of the books that I own which aren't many. Whenever I find any Pika Cat books on sale I will snap them up. Old McDonald and the Leprechaun Chase. This is a book, one of my favorite books by Oliver Jeffers called Stuff. And I also have a companion or a few companion activities that go along with that. So I'm gonna put these together. Basically, this is about, this is a book that's about a little boy who throws or is flying a kite and it gets stuck in the tree. And so he starts throwing all of these other objects to get the kite down and those objects all end up getting stuck. So I prepped these a while ago. These are all of the objects that get stuck in there. I also have the tree. So what I do is I just attach the thumbtack on it. And then one at a time, as we're going through the book, I'll have the student identify the object and then place them in the tree. And it's just a fun way to keep them interactive and engaging for them. So far all of the students that I've done this with have really enjoyed it so yeah I'll try to link this down below too. Find it. I'm gonna put these in together. Um, what else can go in here? So in here let's see I'm gonna put in in the big bags I'm gonna put in my games that I have. This one is called Walk Like a Chicken that I got, I think, at Home Goods for like five bucks. It was super cheap. One of these has a different picture. What I do is I place them down on the sidewalk and they have to go to one of the circles and flip them over. So here's a car and they have to pretend to drive like a car or be a car. There's like an old little grandpa, a pirate, pretending to walk like a pirate. So I want to organize this a bit better. It's like overflowing out of this box. I'm probably going to have to buy a separate storage container for this, but for now, animals because once again you could address so many goals with this. But I got another one. I don't know where it is. It's fine. So in this mesh bag I have all my cards I guess. So this is a matching game duck and goose that you can also use to address so many goals like verbs what are the ducks doing? They are reading. They are taking a bath. Oops. They're taking a bath. I mean, you could do so much with this. Uno for my older students. I have these that you could get at the dollar store. Go together. This is good for associations. And then this is compare and contrast, which I like to use with my lower elementary. You just take any two pictures and you have them identify two things that are same and two things that are different. I have these I got from, I haven't opened them yet, but I got these from the Target dollar section. And these are opposite puzzles. So I thought that was pretty cute. And then these are cards, Go Fish cards that go with that book stuck that I mentioned earlier by Oliver Jeffers. 
So. I think I'm gonna put everything that's in my mesh bags just kind of stack them all in I'm gonna put my sensory box stuffing in there I have my wind-up toys which I feel like you've seen in every single one of my videos but classic Okay, and this one I have so many stickers. This is just filled with stickers. I made an oath to myself to not buy stickers until I finish these. And in this one I have, which I've also shared before, these are like my go-to materials. Here's my speech schedule, which I'm gonna put in here. I have following direction cards my my WH questions I mean all of these you've seen before I have my sentence strips which I use all the time my animal cards that are used for following directions there we go I have my counter which is good for articulation, just to track your trials. And then I have my speech sound cue cards, which I'm gonna keep them all here because these are ones that I just grab for the most often. And something else I'm gonna stick in here is, what I do is I just print a picture of a movie or characters that a lot of my students like, for example, uh, this one's just Toy Story, I have one with Paw Patrol, I have one with um, Sesame Street, and I just have numbers 1 through 10, I also have ones that have 1 through 5 or 1 to 3, depending on the student, and this I use as just a reward token system, so when they're showing good behavior or whole body listening, I will use a dry erase marker and just fill in a circle on top of the number and if they reach 10 then they could earn a game of their choice. So very easy DIY project that takes like literally two seconds to make. I'm going to stick this in here. Eventually be my AAC binder. I bought a few of these clear binders from Amazon. One is going to be with all my parent handouts. One's going to be for AAC. One's probably going to be for all articulation. And I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. But I thought I would quickly go through this and show you what I have in here. This I've already prepped and is ready. It's a communication book. Um, and comes with I feel, I want, I am, and I want to go. So I prepped all of the pictures which are in here already. I don't know what these are called, but I put them in here. So these are already, and these are all the extra ones that I have that I could switch out depending on the student. I kept it pretty simple because I was using this with my nonverbal students who are in preschool. And then in the back I just have these two charts from Adventures in Speech Pathology. This 
is the phonological patterns chart and the speech development chart. So these are just more charts I like to hang up around my room that I stuck in here for now because I didn't know where to put them. 